100 people register, but I know how things go these days and we are recording this session. So this will be available in the cloud afterward. Um, I'd like to thank Sylvia Gutierrez for joining us today from the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, we will be discussing Wikidata and books. And my, did you want to introduce yourself, Sylvia? Or yeah, do you I'll do. I'll do in a while. But I think okay. um, now we can. Um, ooh, that first you, <laughs> and okay. then I'll go. <laughs> okay. So my name is Lori Bridges, and I'm a librarian at Oregon State University. I am one of the seven co-organizers of Every Book Its Reader campaign, and you can find more information about the campaign on Bitly forward slash Every Book Its. The campaign was um, initiated a couple of months ago and we started planning. So we haven't had a lot of time, but we're excited to see that so many folks are interested. The overall goal is to improve the coverage of books, but also literary works and oral stories. And we've chosen the month of April because it is World Book Day on April 23rd. And so we're hoping to get more folks involved. Just yesterday, we learned that Romanian libraries are on board and Wiki Conference India is involved as well. Uh, book coverage in Wikipedia is extremely important. I am coming to you from the United States and you may have seen on the news that we have many book challenges. And for those challenges, I have looked at the stats in Wikipedia and those pages are viewed hundreds, if not thousands of times every day. So it's very important that we improve book coverage on Wikipedia. And we will have more events throughout um, the month, including tomorrow, uh, Mexico is hosting a kickoff event. And so do go to the Every Book, um, it's uh, media meta page, excuse me, it's there on the screen. And then you can see what events are coming up. And so now it is my pleasure to welcome Sylvia, and I look forward to answering any questions that you have in the chat. Thank you so much, Lori, and thank you to all the seven co-hosts that have organized this amazing international campaign that considers also oral knowledge as obviously part of our literary heritage. Um, my name is Silvia Gutierrez. I am seen the Senior Program Officer for Libraries at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, before joining the, the, um, um, the foundation, I was a digital humanities librarian for seven years, and I'm passionate about connecting, enriching, and visualizing data. Why? Because I feel this is a way of critical thinking. And let's see if you agree with me when we finish this workshop. If I'm looking at it this way, it's because this, this side I have the chat. So I'm also seeing if anyone has questions or, or wants to share something. We will have a time to share a little bit about ourselves, like who are we? So um, I'll, we'll get to that. But anyways, um, I got bitten by the Mos Wikidata mosquito in 2014. And um, ever since, I'm a huge fan of this project. And I hope that at the end of this um, talk, you're also a big fan because you will see the um, wonderful things that it can do. So um, just so you have a, a little over overview of what we'll um, be looking at today, um, we will talk about obviously what's Wikidata, the power of linked data through Sparkle queries, and also how we can use Wikidata to search the other projects like Wikipedia and Wikisource, which are two very relevant projects when we're talking about books. And also, of course, how we can add missing information, how we can add that book we love and we feel that everyone should know about. So getting to know you, um, would you mind uh, going into that link. I'm going to write it in the chat as well. Uh, it's an anonymous survey, and it's just to get to know you a little bit better. So um, this is like this. I think I, I wrote it correctly. And um, if you did enter that link, now you can write where you come from. And so we have a participant from the United States. And there are three other participants typing, and I'm excited um, about where you all come from. I myself, I'm in Mexico City. 
Um, this is the country where I was born. And um, yeah, let's see who else is joining. <laughs> Ooh, Botswana, nice. And Poland. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Brazil, yay. <laughs> wow, Malaysia. That's that's amazing. Um, I'm so happy to have you all here. I hope, um, yeah, my English is understandable for everyone. And if not, please just ask, and um, I'll be happy to to come back to anything that it's um, not. Hey, Brazil is getting bigger. <laughs> nice, nice. So we have some more participants. Um, you can still use the poll. Um, and but now um, I would like to know if not in the Slido, uh, if it's too complicated, but I would like to know what do you think when you hear the concept of linked open data? You can also write it in the chat, but interesting. Yeah, we, we see network, relationships, semantic web. I think this is very nice. We, we see how connections is something that people tend to think about. Um, interesting that also people are talking about unique identifiers, um, connecting silhouette knowledge. That's nice. Connecting things that were before um, separated and now get yeah connected triples so i see that there are some people joining that do know the the lingo the the words of the the semantic web i like also how people are talking about discoverability so yes this is why we want to uh, join this amazing project with data because it does allow us to discover things, as we said, um, as someone said, I'm, I'm sorry, in the, in the survey, the, the knowledge that was separated, it allows us to, to discover that. Um, sharing, I, like, I really like that that word comes up, sharing knowledge. Um, metadata is also pretty important for our workshop today because it is a lot about using that meta metadata that we know from libraries um, and now um, connected as, yeah, Wikibase. Oh, we won't touch Wikibase today, but do check it out. Um, if you are planning to host like a, um, your own Wikidata, so to say, like if you need to control your data and um, that's, that's really interesting. Um, Wikibase is really interesting. So yeah, metadata is getting bigger. Yes, we do think about metadata and we will talk about that. So I'm glad that um, many things that you also feel like that are connected with link op open data uh, appear here. Okay, so um, I um, when we talk about the Wikimedia projects, many of us think about Wikipedia because I mean, it's the most popular one. It's the one that has been longer out there and so on. But you may know that there are a lot of other Wikimedia projects that just comments for images and video and so on. And that would be great for oral knowledge. Also, there are very nice initiatives from Nigeria and other countries that are looking at um, oral knowledge, doing um, some recordings and, and sharing them there. Um, but what we will talk about today is Wikidata and also a little bit about Wikisource. And what is Wikidata. So I think many of you know, but just so we have like a sense of how big it is, it's more than 100 million items. We will talk what items are, but it's huge. It's a lot of data, a lot of open data, which is amazing. And there are more than 20,000 active editors and more than 300 languages. And that, all of that, it's why we love Wikidata also because it's collaborative. And um, if you join, like if you people in this call today join, this is going to get better because Wikidata is going to be as good as its contributors are and as diverse as their contributors are. Also, one thing we love about Wikidata is how multilingual it is. Of course, not all languages are there, but I hope we will get there. And um, 
This is very nice. And it's free to reuse, which means people doing amazing stuff with it. If you don't know about wikitrivia.tomjwatson.com, do check it out. It's a very fun game where you get to um, organize events in time. So you have three lives, those three hearts, and um, it's, it's Wikidata powered. So there are a lot of games, not just this one, but I feel like this could be a great game about books, for instance, that you just organize which ones were published first. You see there, there's the great Gatsby. Um, and yeah, that's a pretty, oh, thank you for sharing the, the link. And um, yeah, also there's um, Istropedia uh, or Heistropedia, I don't know. And this is another very cool tool also powered by Wikipedia and Wikidata. And this allows you to create interactive timelines. So here we're looking at all the books from Dr. Seuss, uh, which is one of my favorite authors. And you see them, you see um, his books in a timeline and you can go to the Wikipedia page and learn more about these books. And it's a very nice tool for schools. And um, in general, I think it's, um, yeah. And it's also thanks to what we said before that it's it's a huge database that it's collaborative and this is what what makes people get so creative and of course we also have that cervantesvirtual.com that's a digital library in spanish and this is a project created by blanca sanchez and she did this amazing um interactive data visualization where you can look at all the female writers in their um digital library so you can filter by their country of origin and, or their the language in which they publish and so on so this is these are things that we don't have yet in our digital libraries but we'll get there um uh, and and if we collaborate and if we create a better data and we data we can do all this amazing stuff so Finally, I will say that um, Wikidata is big, Wikidata is collaborative, it's multilingual, and is, as you said in that survey, it is semantic. And what that means is that elements are connected with meaning. It's not longer the hyperlink that was just one thing connected to another without any specific meaning, just the blue link. Now it is Carolina Maria de Jesus, a Brazilian author, connected to the diary she wrote from the favela. Uh, and this connection has meaning. She is the author of this book. Also, she has a country of citizenship, which is Brazil, right? So again, a link that has meaning. It is semantic. And this very resomatic relationships can go anyway, any direction. So Carolina Maria de Jesus is connected to Brazil, but also her book is connected to Brazil because the narrative location of this diary slash novel is Brazil, right? So this is the semantic world. And as you also mentioned, those can be seen as triples. And why they are triples? Because it's one element connected to another through a link of meaning. And the way this looks, uh, the way that this looks in, in, in Wikidata is like this. Every single one of these elements has a Q ID, like a unique identifier. You also mentioned URIS when, when, when we were talking about things that come up um, to your mind when you think about linked open data. So we have elements and we have properties that connect these elements. This is the way that, um, you know, knowledge is connected in Wikidata. So let's have a look at it live. Um, I'm guessing you are still looking at my screen and you're, I'm typing Wikidata and that's something you're also seeing, right? Yes, note. we can see it. Yes, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna write here, Carolina, Maria, um, and, um, or, I mean, I, I could also search for Cuarto de Despejo, which I think in, in, uh, um, in English, it has another name. So this is a good exercise because now we see that there are two things that are called 
Cuarto de Despejo. So this one here, that is actually an album uh, she recorded with music. And this other one here, which is the one we're looking at. And this is, this is nice because we get a little bit of description here so we can know which one of those two is the one that we're looking for. So we'll click on this one. And as we mentioned, there are QIDs. So the QID for Child of Dark is this. This is the unique identifier that distinguishes this element from all the others. And we also have um, properties that connect this element with other things. So for instance, this property you will see very often, which is P31 and it's instance of. So this is to describe what is this thing? Child of Dark, it's an instance of literary work. We can, this is, a, it gets very deep, very philosophical. I was never a cataloger, so I am a librarian, a digital humanities librarian, but I know, you know, defining things, it's very profound and um, we won't have the chance to talk a lot about this, but for now, it's sufficient to say that this is the way that you will model most likely the work that you're going to upload to Wikidata. You will call it, if it's a literary work, of course, you will model it this way. So can anyone write in the chat, what is the QID of um, literary work? I'm going to go there. And can anyone see? I mean, it's a huge number. But at least the two last numbers of that uh, identifier, can you write it on the chat? Just that we all know that we are on the same page. Yes. Violet Fox, that's absolutely right. That's perfect. Arden, that's the right QID. Yes, Lori. <laughs> yeah, so that's the unique identifier of literary work. And as you can see here, there is another um, property called subclass of. Can you tell me what is the PID of subclass of? Can you write it on the chat? That's correct. Anila, Lori, Arlen, it is P279. Yeah, so you see we have QIDs for elements and PIDs for properties, for the ones that are connecting those elements. And we can see that literary work is a subclass of written work. So written work is anything, a master thesis, a letter. There are many types of written works and literary work is one subclass of this. That's great. De Bogo, nice, yes. So yeah, I think you all got it. You all know now that Wikidata is created with different elements that are connected to other elements through properties. And this is the way we do those connections we were talking about. Great. So um, there are a list of common properties and you can look at them here. And as you can see, one of the most common properties is actually um, sites. Why this is? Well, because there's a huge movement inside Wikidata that it's really interested in um, academic publications. So they are connecting which articles are um, citing other articles. And that's like that's a huge thing in Wikidata. So there was even this conference called Wikisite in which people were talking about this. So that's why that's one of the most um, common properties. And as I told you, instance of is something that you will be looking at very often. And um, if anyone remembers, this instance of will be filled with one element, if we're talking about a literary, um, like a novel, for instance. So can anyone type what would be, how would instance of be filled if the thing we're talking about, it's a novel? What would it be? Do you remember? I mean, you do have the QID above, but it was something that it's a subclass of written work. So what, it, what would it be? I think it was kind of a confusing question, but um, we can look at it here. Yes, yes, Janet. 
That's correct, literary work. So as we see here, this novel slash diary is an instance of literary work. Yes. And as you typed before, the Q idea of literary work is this one, the one that ends with 34. So great. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the first Wikidata class, so it doesn't matter if we're wrong now, we're learning and um, we'll get there. So these are common properties. And what is even better, there's this amazing group of people that they are, this, this project, Wiki project, is linked in the meta page of um, the campaign, of the Every Book It's Reader campaign. And it's very good. This is gold. This here will be your guide for whatever you want to do with books. Because they wrote all the properties that are fairly um, relevant for literary works. So here, they even did some nice examples. So here you see, for instance, um, they tell you one property you will be using is instance of. This is P31. And they, they add in an example. For instance, the autobiography of Alice B. Douglas would be an instance of written work. Thank you, Lilian. There's the link. So that's the, the same goes for title. That would be a very common property you will be using. And it shows what the name of the property is and also an example um, of how this is filled. So we all know the diary of Anne Frank and the title here is in um, Dutch. So that's the way this element, I mean, this um, property is filled, right? So we will take a look at it, this at the end when we will um, add an element to Wikidata, but just so you have like a general idea of what are the most common properties you will be using when you model a literary work in Wikidata. There you go, go there. And also they, they are very helpful people. And if you have questions, you can see who are part of this uh, project and you can ask them questions. So do do that. Another thing that it's um, that you will be, let's say, confronted with are external IDs. So we already talked about elements. I didn't talk about strings, but we will get there. And the third thing that it's really relevant when we're modeling books are external IDs. So you can go at um, this link. And I think I can, oops. That didn't go <laughs> as I planned here. So I'm gonna write the link. Oh, it's already there. Thank you, Violet. And this is a query. We will talk about what queries are. Don't get um, like uh, frightened by all this select item, item label. It's easier, I promise. I'll show you how it can be easier. But one of the wonderful things about Wikidata is that we can ask questions to it. And unlike ChatGPT, Wikidata is not making up stuff. Like Wikidata is just telling you whatever it's in its database and it's clear where that data comes from, unlike ChatGPT where we don't know where they scraped their information from. So what I'm asking here is I wanna see all um, instance of Wikidata properties to identify books. And this is what I was talking about, external IDs. So this is a way to look at those external IDs. And um, here we go. So we have, for instance, ISBN, that's an external ID. So it's another like a Q ID from another, another project. So we know ISBN is one of those identifiers. OCLC control number, DOI, and so on, like Google, Box, Google Books ID and et cetera. And we have also from uh, libraries. So for instance, we have um, an ID from the Deutsche Nationalbibliothek from Germany and the National Library of Germany, the Project Gutenberg ebook ID and so on. So there are a lot of IDs that we can connect with Wikidata. So, Going back, we know that there are elements, there are properties, they are connected, 
And these elements can be either information, such as the name of the title of uh, the diary of Anne Frank in Dutch, for instance. They can be another element, as we saw that um, Quarto do Despejo, it's an instance of literary work, which is another element. And we also saw that elements can be connected with external ideas. I think those are the things that are, um, yeah, the, the most common things you need to know if you want to model books. Um, so uh, there's a comment there that, um, that you can use ChatGPT to write a Wikidata query, and that's true. Yes, you can do that. It doesn't always work, and it's not always the right query, but it, it's amazingly done. Yeah, although we, we would have to also talk about the ethical implications of using something like ChatGPT, which was trained by paying very low, um, very low, what is the word? Income? No, like, yes, I mean- Wages. They, Wages, that's the word, thank you. Very low wages, um, which is very sad. Anyways, let's go do happy thoughts about people contributing, not because they're paid very low wages, but because they want to contribute to free knowledge. And here we have, um, now we're gonna talk about the power of linked data. We're gonna see, you know, we're gonna squeeze what linked data can do for us. And as I said, I promise that we will look at something that makes those queries easier. So if you go here to queryweekdata.org um, slash query builder, or even if you just go to querywikidata.org and then click on the query builder, which is here, this one. Then you go to this easy to use interface. And um, what we can do here is that we can ask for instance of literary work, for instance. And we can say, because we know that the property we're looking at, what we want is instance of, we already learned that. So here you write the property and here you say, if it's not literary work or if it's it doesn't matter what it is like you can you can add it there um for instance i could say like regardless of value i want to see country of origin which i know that that's another um property that could be also done but let's say we want to get instance of matching literary Word. So you start start typing and it already suggests some elements in Wikidata. So I'm going to say I want an instance of literary work. And um, you can always look at the element you're interested. So for instance, here we were with Quarto. Um, oh no, I think that's the album. <clears throat> I'll go to the book. Here. So we can see, for instance, um, this element, it's an instance of literary work. And also um, it says country of origin, that's another property, Brazil. So let's say I wanna query other literary works um, that have country of origin, Brazil. So here I start writing country of origin. of origin, this one, yes? And here I say, I write Brazil. And I check that I'm selecting the right one. So, so not Indiana, Brazil, Indiana, but Brazil, a country in South America, like this. And then I run the query. And here I get many literary works that are, um, yeah, that are, that whose country of origin is Brazil, right? So I can go to the QID, I can click on it and and there I see it, right? I see this book 
by Monteiro Lobato, which is, uh, as we asked, the literary work and the country of origin is Brazil, right? So that was pretty easy, don't you think? I mean, now, how could I ask for literary work from Botswana, for instance? What should I do here? Can anyone tell? Like, where should I change the value? Yeah, someone should definitely write a dissertation about the different book titles across languages. I feel like that I've seen that about movies, like how different they can be. And it's hilarious, like Elma Street is the way it's called the, the movie in English. And then in Mexico, it's something like um, the nightmare of blah, blah, blah. It's like 10 words. I don't know, it's a huge phrase. So yes, it's, it's really interesting. Great, Arlen. Yes, that's correct. Good, Alan. So there's a, the answer to my question. Here, I would need to write Botswana. And only with that little change, I'll, I can do the same query here, run it. And now instead of getting literary works from Brazil, I'll get literary works from. Um, whose country of origin is Botswana and none come. So this is, this is, this is why, um, why it's important that you're here. Like we want to make this, this database more diverse um, and, and get more of those works that we would like to see um, here. Anyways, you know how it works. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, that the query broke. It means that there's no data um, on literary works from Botswana. Maybe they are modeled in a different way because sometimes people write instance of books. So it doesn't mean that necessarily that there's no information. Maybe it's not modeled in the way that we're asking. But if you know about a literary work from Botswana, you can search like a very famous one. You can search for it in Wikidata and see how it was modeled. So yes, perfect. Now we know how to build our first query. And yes, this is one of the ways to find the gaps. We will, we will do a little bit more complicated um, queries. So just, that so you know that um, that's a way of doing a query, but you can get a lot of inspiration from the examples that are already available in the Wikidata query service. So if you go there, um, I, I hope you all saw, I clicked on examples and I can search for other queries that are already available here. So this one is a very famous one, which is, searching for house cats in Wikidata and getting the picture that is associated with those um, cats. So here we're asking for an item that has the property instance of house cat. So Q146 is house cat and we're getting the pictures like that that are related to Wikidata. Um, can anyone say, what should I change here in line six? I mean, I can change it also here um, to get dogs, for instance. So what should we change here to get dogs? Actually, there's, um, um, I don't know that there's horses, <laughs> but, here, what we could do is delete this QID, then press control space and start typing here doc like this. And we see that the QID is Q144. So if we only do that change, we can actually change the metadata here of this. So if I do that change and I click on run, now I will get instances of um, dogs 
that have an image. And obviously I could also um, search for instances of books. Uh, I can change that here as well. That have an image, right? So you don't need to create the whole query. You can look at examples and just look at an example that might uh, get the things that you need. Just you, you can learn how to change it and you can change it here as well. So we can see if there are any literary works here, I'm sorry, like that, that have an image associated to them. And you can change that also here in the information. So there you go. That's the, that's the way you do it. So you now know that you here, um, here is the thing you're asking for. So you, this can, you can write banana here, it doesn't matter. But here's the thing you're asking for and you're telling what conditions um, you, you want to be fulfilled. So here is the property that you, that you want. So P31 that we already learned that it's instance of. And here you say instance of what? And you fill this with the QID of the thing you're looking for. So, great. Now let's look, um, if you wanna learn more about this and you're like, oh no, Sylvia didn't explain this in a way that works for me or anyways, or you wanna just do it again, you can go to this tutorial, it's really good. And um, you will go through all the elements of a Sparkle query. And so please take a look at that. And um, I think it's in different languages. So feel free to, to look around. And also do look at the um, uh, example queries that are out there. There are so many good ones. So people have done the craziest queries. One of them is uh, most famous sons and daughters of librarians, for instance. And you wouldn't guess who the most famous one is. I did it yesterday and it's Superman. So Superman is the son of, um, yeah, well, she's a extraterrestrial being, but she was a librarian in her other world. So it's um, very cool, all the queries that you can find there. So go there, look at the example queries and um, modify, uh, just, you know, play around and, and you'll find many, many interesting things. Now let's go to queries that could make sense for us, for the campaign of every book it's reader. So what I did here in this query um, is that, oh, I asked for instance of literary work and I ordered them by site link count. What that means is, like how many Wikipedias they have or how many um, wiki source elements. So they're ordered by the instance of literary work that has more links to other Wikipedia projects. And this is like a proxy for being famous, right? Why am I doing this? Is because I feel like if you look at the, these famous works, um, you can get inspiration to do to model your own book. So here you can see Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet. And if you look at those elements that are so famous and have so many links to so many Wikipedias and so on, you can see like all the things that you could model. So here you see, oh, I could add images. Of course, they need to be in commons. Uh, or you can see, oh, I could add uh, this property, which is inception. Um, title, derivative work, so things that are based on Romeo and Juliet, like movies or any other book and so on. So um, yeah, this, this query can help you see the most famous literary works like The Hobbit or, um, you know, many other, the Harry Potter. And when you look at those, you, you can get many ideas of all the things you could say about a literary work. So like main subject, for instance, um, and a form of creative work. So we don't say instance of novel, but we say instance of literary work. And in, with this other property, form of creative work, we say what type of um, 
literary work it is. It's a novel, a diary, and so on. And as you can see, um, they can be filled with different elements. So genre does not need to be just one of them. It can be young adult fiction, but also fantasy, but also adventure fiction and so on. And one thing we will talk about later is this, the references. So um, yes, you can say many things, but they will be better if you add a reference to those claims. So here, um, we have, for instance, the idea that um, the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's, Philosopher's Stone <laughs> was uh, in, created or incept, thought about in 1990s. And here we have references that um, yeah, support this claim. So that is about um, famous literary works. So there you have the query. Um, no questions until now. I'm looking at the chat. I don't think so. No. Good. Um, now we're going to look at books with an um, external identifier, which in this case um, is the Gutenberg ID. So this is another thing that it's very nice. Once um, books, I mean, once literary works are connected with this and the interviews, we can do things that we cannot do at the Gutenberg uh, page, right? So here, in, uh, there are a lot of books, very amazing books, free books in the project Gutenberg. It's an amazing project, but I can't ask right now, uh, give me all the books that you have that were written by women authors. Right, we can't do that right now. But because the QI, the I mean the Gutenberg ID is connected to Wikidata, we can do that. So here I'm asking all items that have a Project Gutenberg author ID, and that um, that person with the Gutenberg author ID is a female person, right? So I'm saying sex or gender. That's the property. Is female. Like that. And also, I added here optional, tell me the country where they're from. So you can take this query I'm giving to you and you can change whatever you want. Like you can say, I am not interested in people who have a project Gutenberg author ID, but I'm actually, actually, I could change this so it can be more general, just ID. I'm going to change it here and I'll share the query with you. So instead of being the Gutenberg ID with a specific ID, um, I can say, oh, I'm actually interested in all the female authors who have a Google, uh, no, actually I think VF would be a good one, right? With a VF ID and who are female. And I can run the query. So you can play around, as I said, uh, you don't need to learn how to do the whole query. You just, you just can find one that makes sense to you and use it. I'm going to share um, the link here. So in case you want to change the, the um, IDs. And as I shared before here, I think I gave you this other query with the external IDs. So here you can see all the external IDs you could be looking at here. So this is gonna take a while because VF is pretty big. There are a lot of elements with a VF ID, but here you could see other um, yeah, IDs you could be looking at. So if you're interested at, um, I don't know, there's, oh, but this is for books actually, um, but for, authors that are other IDs that, and, and you wanna see all of them that are female, you could look at that. So as I have here, this is Wikidata property to identify books. And there's Wikidata properties to, Wikidata property to identify um, people, right? So I'm gonna give you that. Here we can search for QIDs for people. And you can 
use a query I share. And um, yeah, so VF is one of them. Uh, the ID of the German National Library is another one. The Library of Congress, so you can search for all uh, female writers, uh, women writers in the Library of Congress or the National Library of France, for instance, right? You can just change that P value that we have here uh, to that. And I'm sorry, this is taking a lot of time because VF is huge. You could search for authors with the most number of identifiers. Yes, there's a way of counting that. So what I normally do is um, I Google. <laughs> so I say something like Wikidata query uh, authors by number of identifiers. And maybe you don't find that. So Sparkle, sorry, I should have written that. But maybe someone already created something like that. So here you see this is the, um, the language to count. So here you have select and you say count. Um, so it would be something along these lines. So you will count the properties and you will say what properties you're interested in. And if you um, get stuck, like if you, you can't find the way of, I think it was, um, if you can't find the way to do it, um, you can always, there's a, there's a place in Wikidata where you can ask for a query. So it would be something along these lines, like you would count properties um, and uh, you can try it. You can try to do it, but if you can't, there's also um, in the page I shared before. So where I found the query of um, most famous daughters and sons of librarians, this one. Here, you can see that there's um, another button that it's called request the query. So here you could ask, oh, I would like to do this and this, and um, they will help you create the query you're looking for. Normally it's already there, <laughs> but um, in case you don't find it, then you can ask for one. Um, so now I'm looking at a um, question in the chat and it says, um, hi, Sylvia, I'm looking at this, Things Fall Apart, a great book by Chino Atebe. And I am curious about all the identifiers. Yes, let's go to the identifier section. So it's this one. So we have VF and so on. And um, none is routes one to an African library. There's even an ID for a Quora topic. What would be the problem? How can we get African libraries um, in there? Yes, that's a great question. So in order to get African libraries here, you would need to um, create a proposal for a property, right? So you would make need to make a case of there is this library that has this consistent identifier and we want this property to be in Wikidata. So that's the way the National Library did it. So you can see, for instance, in um, here, let me see if I can show you very quickly. Um, they did a case like they said, um, yes, we want to create a property that is the identifier for the subject uh, issued by the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. And they said the form of this identifier, so it's an H eight digits um, identifier. And they gave some examples and so on. So no, you don't need to be a national library. You just need to um, make a case. Like we have this persistent identifier, that is a requirement. So it doesn't need to be a persistent identifier. So for instance, I did the case for um, ELIM, which is the um, encyclopedia of um, uh, Mexican literature. So, um, this encyclopedia has persistent identifiers for writers. And I, I made the case. I said, 
look, this is a very important encyclopedia and it has relevant information about authors from Mexico. And now it is, um, it is a, a property. So I think, for instance, this writer who I really like, I think she has an LMID. Uh, it doesn't. LMID, let me see if I can find it. Yes, this is the identifier. So I, I made the case for this identifier and now, yeah, we can add information about them. We can add those properties. Did I answer the question? Was it clear? I think maybe I should tell you where you do the property thing. So uh, create a property with the data. There's a page where you suggest. Uh, Uh, here, property proposal. So I'm going to add this link here. Uh, why, why is there like a smiley face? <laughs> I don't know why I added that link and it went, huh? Well, I don't know. But uh, I think it's converting one part of the URL. Uh, yes, that part, yeah, because it, it has like two points and a P and it's converting that to an emoji. Anyways, but you see the page here and that's where you do the, the property um, uh, proposal. So here it says like before proposing a property, please look at the ones that already exist and it has to be discussed there. And how can, so I see another question, persistent identifiers, how can we get that? So normally uh, libraries, especially national libraries, have persistent identifiers for their authority control. So if they do, then it's easy <laughs> if they do have those uh, persistent identifiers. But um, if they don't, then, it's a little bit more difficult. And it doesn't have to be a number. It can be a word um, as long as it is persistent. So yeah, that would be the thing that we would need. So for instance, just to spread some good news, there is um, this database, uh, the African Journals Online, and they have persistent identifiers. So that is a property in Wikidata. And actually, uh, in my example uh, at the end, I think oh, we're pretty, are, are we ending in three minutes? No. Technically, we advertised for an hour, but um, I set the Zoom up for 90 minutes. So it's fine to go over. And if folks have to leave, then that's fine as well. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's go to the other things. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to go click quickly through this other um, query, which is nice. Um, this is a query to look at the narrative. Um, that is not. <laughs> uh, so I had another query to look at the narrative place, a map that shows the narrative place of um, literary work. But I have it somewhere here. So just. Like, let me take a quick look. And what, is, what that means is that I'm, with this query, I'm looking at the place where um, the book is taking place, so to say. I got it. So I'm sharing my screen again. Here. So with this query, which I'm sharing in the chat as well, um, we can see um, items that have a narrative location that is property 840. And um, I'm getting the coordinates of that place. So narrative location, and it's an instance of famous P31, instance of literary work. And here you can see literary works that happen in different parts of the world. So here you can find um, literary works that 
occur in a place in Ecuador or Colombia, Nigeria, uh, Congo, Angola, and so on. And if you click on those dots, you'll see the elements. So here, for instance, we have Forest of the Pygmies. That's a book that takes place in Kenya, right? And so on. So that's um, a thing we can also model. And it's cute, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> the map. So that's, that's, that's another query. I'm going to, yeah, sorry about that mistake that this should have been the link. And um, finally, let's look at um, quickly just other, I'm going to just post them in the chat. We don't have time now to go in detail, but um, it suffices to say that um, this is a way in which we can use Wikidata to search Wikipedia. So for instance, here I'm looking at um, authors who are a Polish citizen, for instance, and they have an article, a Wikipedia article in another language, but not in English. So we, we could do a translation if we know the other language in which this um, book is in. So here, you can, as I said, we can change the uh, country. So we can say, oh, I want to see all authors who are um, Ghanaian citizens, right? So I would only need to change line six or here. And instead of writing Poland, I would have to write Ghana, right? And, and I would get all of them who have an article in another language, but not in English. But you could also be interested in for instance, Linia, maybe she wants to do articles in Portuguese. So she could change this line and just add PT to Portuguese and get all Polish or Ghanaian. So here I could change to Ghana. Ghanaian citizens uh, and see all of them that do not have an article in Portuguese, but in another language, right? So. This is a way that, uh, this is a query that can be used for the campaign. We can look at uh, authors from other countries that don't have an article in our language. So here is the query I did before. And this is uh, for Polish authors. So here we have Stanislaw Lim and so on. And of course we could also add who an author who is a woman, right? So I could add here author, um, that uh, with the property uh, gender, sex or gender, which is P21, and then female, like that, like this, who is a woman, and, and so on. So I'm gonna share this link in the chat as well. So here you have that query that can help um, perfect. That's, that's, that's just to say that we can use it to query Wikidata, but we can also use it to search books in a wiki source or, you know, uh, literary works. So here I did another query that I'm also sharing in the chat. And this is to look for all female authors who were born, I hear it's commented, so this line won't run, but I can take that hashtag out. And here is to look at all women that were born in India, for instance, that have um, a, a work in Wikisource. So if I take that hashtag out, if you take the hashtag out of the query I just shared, um, there you would find women born in India who are female and um, have a work in Wikisource, an English Wikisource, right? Oh, sorry, this should say Wikisource, like that. Anyways. So that's that. And let's go to the final part, which is how do we add what's missing? So how do I add the book I want to Wikidata? I first wanted to show the power, why we would want to do it. But now let's say, how can I do it? And I'm going to live add a Wikidata element of a book I really like, which is Amantla, written in 1980. And there's a very complicated way of stating that this book was banned. So we won't get there. There's a whole discussion. We can link the links to all the discussion that is going on. But um, 
Yes, I'm going to give you some tips of how you can add the um, book you want. So these are my three recommendations. If you want to add a book to Week Data, you should have number one, um, a link to a famous work. So I showed you already a query how to find famous works. Um, you should have a link to a related work. So for instance, it could be another book from the author, or it can be a book from an author in the region. So here I have um, a book from another South African author. And just to have an idea of how this book was modeled, or I can have a book, a very famous book from the region, so to say. So the book I want to model, Amantla, is from a um, South African author. And, um, and the thing I can, um, I can do is, yeah, search for another book that was like that. Just take a look at all the properties that I could fill. So here I see this, okay, I can add a word, perhaps described in source, blah, blah, blah. This identifiers. So I take a look at all the things I could add to my book, right? Or from another South African author like Bessie Head. So here I see this book and I see whatever they have about her, uh, about this book, I'm sorry. So that's one thing. And then um, you should find references for the properties you'll use. So once I say, okay, this is, um, oh, and also you should look that the author of the book is already in Wikidata because if not, you would need to create an element about her or him, right? So fortunately, my author is already in Wikidata. We won't have time to cover, but I will give you a link on how to learn more. Uh, about adding authors. So this in this uh, website, learnwikidata.net, you can find more information about how to add an author. But let's say your author is already in Wikidata. So here you have it in hand, um, the South African novelist. And um, that's that. That's the first. You have your model ready. You have a famous work you can uh, take a look at. You have a related work and you have your author. Great. Now you will need to search for references. So publication date, main subject, and so on. Um, I have my references. So I have this um, uh, newspaper article in which they talk about Miriam Plali and they talk also about the book I'm interested in. So they do say that Amandla was published in 1980. So I have a source, right? I also have a source that this book is about the Soweto massacre. So this article, which is from the African Journal's online uh, database, talks about this book and it says that it's part of um, the four novels that are about this tragedy, this uprising in Soweto, where they killed um, 350 children um, who were hoping for a different type of education, right? So uh, I have my reference here. I also have a reference to the fact that it, it is a novel and that the narrative location is Soweto. So I have uh, all these journal articles I already looked for. And so I have my sources, I have my model, and I could even look for some external identifiers. It is not needed, but it's useful because it proves that the book that you're talking about exists, right? It's there. It has a persistent identifier somewhere, right? So. Now I have that and let's let's do it. Let's let's search for. So I'm going to search for Amandla first. And I already did this uh, because there are many things that are called Amandla, which because it's a word that means power in Shosa in Sulu. So there are many things, uh, but none of this is the book, right? I already did my research. I know none of this is about Miriam Sally. And another way I can look at it is because here I have my author and I can ask so to what links here. And I can see that, I mean, there's this, um, there's this redirection, which was because someone else created um, a page about Amanda Tali and there's this link to this talk page. So there's no book uh, connected to Miriam Tlali. This will be the first book that uh, literary work that we connect. So 
I now I know that Amantla is not there and I can create it, right? So when you search for it and it's, um, uh, you have to log in to your account. This is my, um, yeah, um, my, my Wikidata Wikipedia account. And since it's not there, I can create a new item here. You can click here or sometimes it even appears here. So I'm creating it in English. That's why, but you can select another language. And I'm writing the label in English. So it's called Amantla. And I can say 1980 novel written by South African author, um, Miriam Plan. Like that. Oh, sorry to see you go and sorry it took longer than expected, but um, yes. So we click on create and now we can add statements. So first thing is instance of, and I can write literary work. Um, I can add another statement. And as you can see, it already suggests, once I write here instance of literary work, it already suggests properties that are common to a literary work. So it says, oh, who is the author? And I, as I said, it's useful to already have um, handy the, the QID of your author. So here I can write the QID just to be sure that it's exactly this medium plally and not another medium plally um, like that. And I can add the publication date, which is 1980 and the reference, because here I have a reference that states that Truly, it was written in that year. So here I added that, but I can add a reference and say a uh, reference URL, it's here, and publish like that. So I have references to say that it is true that it was written in 1980. Um, I could also say that the main subject is Soweto, the Soweto uprising. So I can add here main subject. I have the QID, the Soweto uprising, like that. And I can add my reference, which was this article. So there we go. We add the reference. And so on. So are there any questions until now? Let me just add finally the, the IDs. So I have. I search for this book in library thing and I can add library thing ID. Oh, sorry, work ID. That's that one. That's perfect. And I will also add the Goodreads ID and I just wanted to show how it works because so when you search for a book in Goodreads, for instance, Amantla, you see one edition, right? But then you have to go here to show all editions. And when you click on that, you get the right ID. That's the right ID of the book, this one, which shows all different editions. So that's if you wanna add a Goodreads um, ID, work ID, that would be this one. And you can check that when you click, it should show the right, um, the right information. The same goes for this other external ID. When you click on it, it should show um, library thing. It should show the right um, book. So yes, there are a lot of lists of books that need to be created. Um, one of them, I mean, you could see, you could use one of the queries we looked at today. And if you see, for instance, like there's no literary works from authors from Botswana, you can make that your, <laughs> you know, your thing, right? Um, so you can search in Wikipedia for authors from Botswana and add their works there. Um, in the Wiki Projects book, I think there's another list. Uh, the meta page, I think, was I wrong, Lilian? You were going to do some lists of the books that people could edit? 
um, and Lori, I think you were creating also Listeria lists, right? Of um, books that people could edit. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done. One of them, as I said, are queries. You can search for books that are not uh, that are not sufficiently described. So for instance, as you could see, even Bessie Head, even a book from Bessie Head, which is a very famous um, South African author, is not really um, well um, described. So we saw Maru, I think, that, that was the name of the book, um, or I can search here, and, and it doesn't have enough information. So here you see it's very poor. So you can almost give for granted that books that are from um, Latin America or by women are not, or Africa are not really well covered. So yes. Oh, you created for Wikipedia, right. But I mean, if they're not in Wikipedia, most likely they're not in Wikidata either. So you can create both at the same time and then link them. Yeah, lots of work to be done, but I'm so happy you bear with me. And I'm sorry, I, I, I came 15 minutes after the time, but if you have any questions to connect, I'm here, <laughs> there's my email and let me know if you have any questions, but also thank you so much, Laurie, Lilian. Oh, for thank you for coming, this. Sylvia. Great. This campaign. is an amazing presentation. And I, I mean, Wikidata is not my area of expertise and I'm still going to go play with it. And it was very fascinating. And I've also unmuted Lillian so she could speak as well. I know she knows a lot about Wikidata. So, gracias, Sylvia. Thanks a lot. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. And I would like to, uh, to invite everyone, would like to create some kind of event during our campaign in, uh, about Wikidata. You can work uh, individually, but if someone are planning to do some kind of specific event, please. Join us. Uh, as you see, there is a lot of work to do. If you had just uh, like a, a simple label about a title book and Wikidata, it's like a huge work. It's not something small, it's huge. So please let's connect you with us and improve the information about, about books and writers on Wikidata. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Thank you everyone for coming, for everyone that contributes to the campaign and to Wikimedia projects. Thank you.